Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. King of my life, I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony. Lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou wast laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light arrayed, guarded thee whilst thou slept. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Like Mary through the gloom, come with a gift to thee. Show to me now the empty tomb, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. spirit of prayer. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, we come to you as we are, seeking to become strong and faithful followers of you. Challenge and direct us, make us and mold us as your people, that we may fulfill our potential and your intention. May our discipleship point clearly to you, for you are the one who loves us in ways that we can't even imagine. Fill us with your strength as we encounter a world that seems filled with chaos and uncertainty. No matter where we turn, news of natural disasters, genocide, and mass terror saturate our minds and our hearts. It is easy to find ourselves confused and angry and at a loss for understanding why. Surround all who are impacted by these acts of devastation with your strength, peace, and hope. Use our confusion and anger, God, to stir within us the many ways we can respond in love. Help us to trust in your abiding presence, 
and to know that you are with us in our suffering. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for safe communities throughout our world, for our families, companions, and all those we love. We pray for all those in need, the sick and the suffering, prisoners, captives, and their families, the hungry, homeless, and oppressed. We pray for our church leaders and for churches everywhere. We pray for our world leaders, that a spirit of respect and understanding may grow among all nations and peoples. God of love, hear our prayer. Keep us trusting in your constancy, O God, relying on your abiding love. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus.
Jesus, Thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love Thou art. Visit us with Thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, oh, breathe Thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in Thee inherit. Let us find that promised rest. Take away our bent to sinning. Alpha and Omega B. End of faith as it's beginning. Set our hearts at liberty. He'll embrace me with his arms In the arms of my dear Savior Oh, there are ten thousand charms Finish then thy new creation Pure and spotless let us be let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. Welcome to Disciples Net. I'm Katherine Rayleigh. Odds are you probably don't know me, and I probably don't know you. I don't know when you're watching this, or where you are, or what you're going through in your life right now, or why you came to Disciples Net today. But who, when, where, what, or why, I hope that this service and this message bring peace and hope into your life, and that God may show you love and guidance through them. The passage that you just heard or read is from 1 Corinthians, written to the people of Corinth in present-day Greece, from the evangelist Paul. This is one of the passages of the Bible that you read once, and then you have to go back and read another time, and then another, to make sure you followed all the turns and twists that Paul takes in his writing, especially if the language you read it in isn't your most familiar language. Paul talks about foolishness and wisdom perishing and saved, human wisdom, and the wisdom of God. All of these pairings can get a little confusing. It's this very language that I love the most about this passage. In all of Paul's talk about foolishness, wisdom, and power, and weakness, he echoes the paradoxes of the world that we live in. He wasn't the first to use language that way, and he certainly wasn't the last either. Great literature, plays, speeches, debates, stories, almost anywhere that you can find language being used, you can find this theme of human life, that sometimes things are not always as they seem. If you've ever been delighted by a magic trick or planned a surprise for someone, you've seen this theme that things aren't as they seem. If you've ever judged someone wrongly by their outside appearance, then discovered that their personality and gifts were much more than you would have guessed, you've seen that things are not always as they seem. So often the reality turns out differently than our expectations, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. In this passage to the people of Corinth, Paul talks about things not being as they seem. It might seem like death by crucifixion is weakness, that a person who's supposed to be the Son of God would not allow that to happen. Paul says, though, that this foolishness is not as it seems. Jesus' death on the cross is not weakness, but power. It might seem like foolishness to us, but it's actually the greatest wisdom possible, the wisdom of God. In our world today, we know that things are not always as they seem. We've seen it over and over again. Have we learned all of the lessons that that can teach us, though? I don't think we have. And that's why going back to Paul's words to the Corinthians can teach us something. 
Paul reminds us of lessons that we need to learn and relearn and keep being reminded of when we forget again and again. As Christians, we follow Christ, the Son of God, who died on a cross and then returned to the world. We use the symbol of the cross to remind us of Christ's death and to remind us then of Easter morning when life proved triumphant over death. Things are not as they seem. A symbol of death, a symbol of the cross, is actually a symbol of eternal life. Foolishness is proven to be wisdom. Before Jesus Christ came into the world, the Israelites expected the Messiah, the son of David, to come with a sword and overthrow the government. But instead of death and battle, Jesus brought healing and words, a different kind of wisdom. The Bible tells us that things are not as they seem in other places, too. It says that the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. It says that a small shepherd boy like David can overthrow a mighty man like Goliath. It says that a shepherd boy can be king. It says that an enemy can be loved. It says that those who mourn will rejoice, that the meek will inherit the earth. It says that Messiah, the King of the Jews, and the Son of God, can change the world through love instead of violent takeover. Things are not as they seem. What lessons do Paul's words to the Corinthians teach us then? They teach us that physical strength is not the ultimate strength. That God's power does not come from what humans call strength, but from what humans might call foolishness. Gandhi learned that lesson. Martin Luther King Jr. learned that lesson. They learned that physical strength is not the wisdom that God depends on. It's not love. They engaged on nonviolent protest and changed the world. Things are not as they seem. Human wisdom might say that death cannot be overcome, that physical strength is necessary for power. Human wisdom might say that a blind person cannot lead others, that a deaf person cannot make beautiful music, that a person without full use of his or her body is weak. Helen Keller, Beethoven, and so many others in our lives have proven that kind of human wisdom wrong. Things are not always as they seem. Human wisdom also used to say that a black person and white person cannot be friends, that a Muslim and a Christian are too different to get along and work together for peace. Human wisdom has again been proven wrong. Following God's wisdom instead of human wisdom, it doesn't mean to turn off your brain. It means to focus your brain, your mind, on learning these lessons of hope and life instead of despair on searching for God's way of love and power instead of depending on human power. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Things are not as they seem. How, though, do we tell the difference between human wisdom and God's wisdom? Paul teaches us God's wisdom points to life and hope. Human wisdom points to despair and death. God's wisdom turns weakness into power, turns despair into hope, suffering into purpose, foolishness into the power and wisdom of God. When it seems like death is winning in the cross, we can count on the fact that things are not as they seem. In what seems like foolishness, we can find the power and wisdom of God. Please pray with me. Loving God, please grace us with your wisdom to trust with faith in the things that we cannot see, following your love and mercy every time. Amen.
Even though you can see me, of course, I cannot see you. That's part of the nature of our worship at Disciples Net. But most of my career in ministry, when I have presided at the table, standing or sitting on this side of the table, and looked at the people of my church on the other side of the table in the congregation, I tend to look around the room and things register with me which I might know about the individual people in the room. And most of the time, of course, I didn't know everything, but as a good pastor, most of the time I knew things about the individual people who were in the congregation in front of me, some with special reasons for having joy on that particular day some with special reasons for having concern and worry. And as we think today about the wisdom of humans and the foolishness of God, I am reminded of those times when I stood behind the table and looked at people in pain. And sometimes I would say my own little sentence prayer for that person that I noticed as we were preparing to receive communion together. And I think about the healing that comes to us, the, the lessening of pain that comes to us when we come to this table and when we participate together in these very special moments of worship of taking Christ's body and Christ's blood. And if there ever was the ultimate example of foolishness and wisdom. I think perhaps it is here. Pain usually brings pain, does it not? In this case, pain brings healing. That doesn't make much sense. But it is the very brokenness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that brings healing to us when we come to this table when we receive his broken body, when we receive his shed blood. That is the ultimate foolishness if you try to think about it and try to make sense out of it. But faith doesn't make that much sense in the first place. After all, faith is faith. 
If it made sense, it would simply be logic. We believe because God enables us to believe, and God calls us to this table. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for the ability to be able to come here as your people. We thank you for making things right in the world where things can go so wrong. And we thank you for the joy that comes from this great sacrifice. Be with us now as we take this bread and this cup and bless these things in your Son's name. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same manner also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. May we partake together. All is in readiness. Come to the feast. go with blessings to remember that God's wisdom is in the love of God. Things are not as they seem. The cross is not a symbol of death, but a symbol of life and hope and love. Amen. Mm -hmm.